Welcome to another episode of Money Matters. For a couple of decades now, passive strategies have really captured the investor's attention. These strategies, which include index tracking exchange traded funds, ETFs, have significantly increased their assets under management. In this episode, I'm going to dive into why this is and talk about the pros and cons in the battle between passive and active strategies. I'll try to keep this video relatively concise. Passive strategies for most investors means buying investments that does not involve any form of management. Most associate passive strategies with the picking of ETFs. So for the purposes of this video and this comparison, I'm going to be talking about index tracking ETFs, which is the passive part, versus its active counterpart, mutual funds that buy into stocks. Both ETFs and mutual funds give the investor the ability to buy into a diversified range of stocks. They will both pool many different investors' monies together, and each and every investor will hold the same range of stocks. First, I'll wave the flag for mutual funds and talk about what they have to offer. Mutual funds have fund managers and their respective teams that make very specific stock picks to be held within the fund. The teams will meet up with the board members of various companies, discuss their outlook, comb through the accounts, analyze the markets that they're within, and decide whether or not to allocate any cash to buying the shares of these companies to be held within their fund. Therefore, it's a very deliberate selection process to try and buy the best companies to be held within their fund. Fund managers argue that they will uh, deliver market outperformance because not all companies on the index will have a bright future ahead. Just because they're on the index doesn't mean that they're going to perform. The other point is that not all companies on an index will be priced fairly. They may be overpriced and therefore the fund manager's ability to avoid these companies that are overpriced will perhaps generate some better returns. So fund manager's role is to perhaps find companies that are undervalued at a good price and therefore that is part of their selection process. In summary, you could say that their selection process is a mixture between price and future performance of a company. Their other argument is that they can better manage volatility levels during market downturns. In fact, some say that market outperformance comes from the fact that they will lessen the losses when, during market downturns rather than accelerate gains during market rallies. In summary, with mutual funds, you're able to delegate the responsibility of managing your wealth to the expertise of a fund manager and their respective teams. Next, I will wave the flag for ETFs and explain what they have to offer. ETFs represent anything from broad market indices to niche sectors or alternative asset classes. It offers a low cost access to a diversified range of stocks because it's cheaper than buying stocks individually and certainly cheaper than buying mutual funds. ETFs typically track a given index, for example, the S&P 500 index or the Hang Seng index. Proponents of ETFs say that fund managers do not outperform their benchmark or index, which is true. Therefore, what's the point of buying into a fund when you can simply track an index for a much lower cost? Investors are ever more cost conscious these days, which has led to the growth of ETFs. There are plenty of ETFs to pick from, so you can really construct a portfolio that matches your specific needs. For example, a couple of interesting sector-specific ETFs are the uh, Vanek Video Gaming and Esports ETF, Fun Ticker ESPO, or the uh, Procure Space ETF, Fun Ticker UFO. You can say that an investor will save around 1% per annum by picking a selection of ETFs instead of a selection of mutual funds. Overall, there's no right or wrong answer to how one picks one's personal investments. It's personal preference. I personally will likely pick a mixture of both. I am a cost conscious investor, but if I see value in a mutual fund, I will pick it. 
So whilst it's true that most fund managers underperform, there are those that do outperform. So some skill is needed in picking the right fund, or to put it another way, picking the right talent. It's important to spot and avoid closet indexing mutual funds. These are funds which closely mimic its, its benchmark or index so as to not deviate too much from it. There's not a lot of point paying the relatively high cost of a closet indexing mutual fund when you can just simply buy an ETF. I know a lot of self-investors who will only pick low-cost ETFs and or stocks to minimize cost. I myself have clients who use my services and because they're already paying for my management skills, they uh, might steer towards low-cost ETFs to try to uh, manage the overall costs. However, some care is needed when picking ETFs. As I alluded to earlier, ETFs will match an index and also match the weighting of the index as well. So if you look at a typical index, for example, the S&P 500, the weighting of those constituents are very, very heavy towards the top. So for example, um, if you look at the value of the companies at the top, they're way, way, way more valuable than the ones below it. For example, Apple, Microsoft, these are absolutely uh, highly valuable companies that are multiple, multiple times more valuable than the ones below it. So when you think about picking ETFs, actually you may not be as diversified as uh, you may think. A lot of your money is going towards those top guys. Furthermore, as ETFs grow ever more popular and there are more and more investors' money going into these ETFs, it's there's this theory that it's pumping up the value, it's pumping up the price rather, of these top companies. And because there's no selection process, a lot of money is being channeled into these uh, companies at the top of these indices. Therefore, some people say that there's this ETF bubble and that uh, too much money is going towards the guys at the top without any concern for whether the price is at a fair price or not. So some have theorized this ETF bubble um, uh, and, and there's too much money going towards the constituents at the top. Whatever picks are made, it is important to regularly review portfolios to make sure it's still relevant to market conditions and relevant to personal objectives. That being said, be conscious not to make too many changes to your portfolio, particularly making emotional knee-jerk reactions to changing market conditions, and that's particularly relevant in today's environment right now. History has shown over and over again that one of the biggest factors in unsuccessful investments is investor error. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Money Matters. As usual, put your comments below, your questions below. Let me know what other topics you would like to see in future episodes of Money Matters, and I'll see you next time.